In this video, we're going to give an introduction, a general introduction to thermochemistry. Now, thermochemistry is, when you think about it, you break up this word into two, right? Thermodynamics and chemistry, right? So it's the thermodynamics of chemical reactions. And what that means is just the enthalpy and entropy changes that are associated with chemical processes. So, for example, let's take the calorimeter that you see uh, in this figure on the left, right? So this is a constant pressure calorimeter. And in this calorimeter, right, similar to our bomb calorimeter that we looked at a few videos ago, um, we have in the center as our system some sort of chemical reaction, right? So in a bomb calorimeter, you have some sort of combustion reaction going on. But in this general case, let's just say we have some sort of chemical reaction that's happening. Um, and its surrounding is some sort of bath, be it a water bath or some sort of organic solvent. We have some sort of surrounding, right? This is the exact same as our general thermodynamic system, except now we're just dealing with a chemical reaction, right? Uh, so basically this calorimeter has some sort of outside insulated container such that the um, heat transfer follows this first law of thermodynamics, right? So where you have the Q of the surroundings plus the heat transfer of the system must be equal to zero, right? So again, that sets up that interplay where whatever uh, heat is transferred into the system must be the negative of whatever heat is transferred from the surroundings, right? Depending on the temperature, right? Okay, so uh, if we want to solve for the heat change inside our calorimeter, right, we would have to use our heat change uh, differential equation, right? So we have dQ is going to be equal to C dt. And specifically, we're at constant pressure. So that means we're going to hold these pressures constant and be dealing with the constant pressure heat capacity. So we have dQ P equals Cp dt. Okay, so when dealing with the calorimeter um, or most uh, thermochemistry, mostly you're going to be making measurements in the bath, right? So what do I mean by that? So you're uh, just like with the bomb calorimeter, keep in mind it was inside a vessel and there was no thermometer or anything being uh, put inside the vessel or inside the reaction container. Uh, all the measurements are done outside the container or outside of the chemical reaction in the bath, right? So if we were gonna add the thermometer to this, Right, we would have a thermometer in this calorimeter, right? And this guy would be measuring your temperature, but it would not be in the uh, reaction vessel. It's going to be in the bath, right? So you make all of your thermodynamic measurements in thermochemistry in the surroundings. So I'll put that all measurements are made in the surroundings. made in the surroundings, right? So uh, basically what we're gonna have here is our uh, heat change at constant pressure for the bath is going to be equal to the heat capacity, again, of the bath times the temperature change. And that temperature change, you're measuring uh, the temperature change of your bath, right? So since we're measuring the temperature change, let's isolate dt here, right? And so if we do that, we have dq p of the bath, right, over the heat capacity of the bath. Okay, and so we've shown that the heat capacity at constant pressure is the enthalpy, right? So we can actually rewrite this equation as the enthalpy change, right? So dH of the bath over the heat capacity of the bath. Right, so uh, since we know that the 
uh, heat transfers must follow the first law of thermodynamics, right? So we know that Q surrounding is going to be equal to negative Q system. Right. So what does this mean for our bath and um, and our chemical reaction? Right. So this means that the uh, Q. P. Of the system. Is going to be equal to. The Q P, the negative Q P of the bath. And keep in mind, these uh, heat transfers at constant pressure are all just the enthalpy. Right. So this is basically saying the enthalpy of our system is going to be equal to the negative enthalpy of our bath. So now what this does, what this means is that we can make measurements in the bath, but still be getting to the enthalpy change of our chemical reaction. Right. Since we know that all of the heat that's transferred to the bath has to be coming from the chemical reaction, we can really measure the enthalpy change of the reaction while still taking measurements in the surroundings, right? So all we have to do is just change this equation, switch back to my little pink color there. So all we have to do is change this guy. So we have DT is equal to negative delta H of the system over the heat capacity of the bath, right? So, um, so think about it like this, right? So um, all we did was just plug in, right? So if you solve this guy for H bath, that's just gonna be negative H system. So the same thing, we just plug in here to get the temperature change, right? Okay, so now this gives us um, a way to define and classify um, what happens when we have an increase in temperature versus a decrease in temperature, right? So um, in this case, if we have a delta H, and let me use a different color here. So if we have a delta H that is less than zero, Right, we call that an exothermic process. Right, what this means is that the system is producing heat. Right, the system is going to be producing heat. Right, that's going to be a negative delta H. So that's going to cancel out with this negative. So you should see a raise in temperature. Right, so that makes sense. Right, the, the uh, uh, system is transferring heat to the surroundings. You notice an increase. And temperature, right? So that's that only can happen here using this equation if we have a negative delta H. So a negative delta H is exothermic. This means that the system is producing heat. And the opposite of that, right? If our delta H is greater than zero, that means we're going to see a decrease in temperature there. This is what we call endothermic. Right. This means that the system is absorbing heat. Right. So depending on whether the system is absorbing or producing heat uh, d dictates whether you'll see an increase or a decrease in your temperature uh, with respect to the, the measurement of the chemical reaction. Right. OK, so this is just a quick overview of uh, thermochemistry. Uh, this is going to be the underpinning of the next few uh, topics uh, in this class. So basically what we'll be doing is applying some of the thermodynamics that we've learned in the beginning of the course and applying that specifically to chemical changes and things that are relevant uh, to chemical reactions.